Doctor, thank you so much for being here with us today. It's um, my pleasure. Can you tell us a little bit about catheter venography and how it works? Well, catheter venogram is a diagnostic test to look at the veins of the body, and it can be from your toes to your head. It involves placing a small plastic tube about the, the size of a pencil lead through um, any one of the number of what we call access sites, which are just areas where you enter into the body, and you're able to guide it through the body, typically using fluoroscopy or x-ray video, and from that access point, negotiate it virtually anywhere you want to go. From that position of placing the catheter, we inject a contrast material, which is basically a salt water. It contains iodine as the salt. It allows us to take the x-ray pictures, which then define not only the anatomy, but in, in some respects, the physiology of a vein, and that's catheter venography. Why would you use catheter venography for diagnosis as opposed to some of the other diagnostic tools that are available? Sure. There are, are many alternatives in the diagnostic modalities available to evaluate for venous diseases. They all have their pluses and minuses, and of course, uh, catheter venography is the invasive version. That in itself is a relative disadvantage. However, when you look at the safety of catheter venography, it is quite safe. The advantage of it, uh, most commonly from the perspective of a physician like myself, is that we actually can treat at the same time. So if we do find an abnormality, we take care of it in the same sitting. Other than that, the, the inherent advantages for venous disease relative to other vascular disorders is that venous disease is more subtle in terms of its abnormalities. The differences in terms of flow uh, and pressure abnormalities within a vein versus an artery are, are quite a bit different. And our ability to recognize them with standard tests uh, is, actually, is actually challenged. So for an example, if you were to do a standard venogram an MR venogram, a CT venogram, any of the uh, venographic imaging modalities, you may find that, that your most reliable indicator is simply a stenosis or narrowing. However, there are secondary findings that only really are apparent on a catheter venogram, and that is the rate of filling of a collateral vessel, an alternative pathway, the relative flow rates, the degree of opacification, these sort of gray findings not as black and white as narrow or not narrow, are really only able to be you know, definitively identified with catheter venography. What are the risks associated with it and, and how risky is it really? A diagnostic venogram is incredibly safe. It um, is largely related to contrast reaction actually as the number one uh, potential complication and that's actually quite unusual. A severe reaction is one in 10,000 or less. So it's actually a very safe procedure as far as the diagnostic portion. Of course, if that were to convert into a therapeutic procedure, the risk would go up, but then it's actually a different procedure. Okay. And in terms of the um, advantages of it, in addition to the fact that you could potentially do the procedure simultaneously, what would some of the other advantages be? Well, I think the most important difference with the catheter venogram versus, say, a Doppler study or an MRV is that, as I mentioned earlier, each one of these modalities has its, its pluses and minuses, but the diagnostic catheter venogram is the one that's going to allow you to identify the subtle findings which will, will increase the number of patients who you identify pathology uh, relative to, say, a Doppler, which, which is certainly a, a useful screening tool. It will find patients in a non-invasive, low-cost, readily available manner, but it will also miss quite a few. So I think that your, your ability to capture all of the potential patients with an abnormality, I think, is higher with the catheter venogram. And in terms of this particular meeting, what was the consensus around catheter venography as a diagnostic tool? Well, I wish I could say that there was a definitive consensus reached. Uh, I think that um, you know these these types of exchanges of information are certainly critical, um, but we are dealing with something that that really has just come on into the, the sort of awareness of many physicians, and for us to actually definitively come down with 
even the way to do the procedure. Um, I think we're a bit challenged with that even. So, so I don't know that there, there really is a consensus that's been developed. There has certainly been uh, a sharing of ideas and further discussion may lead to a consensus. Um, but the fact of the matter is it is a safe procedure and at least we've established that fact and that there is something going on worth evaluating and hopefully with more study and more discussion we'll, we'll get that, that piece of it solved. So what will happen next to get you closer to getting the whole community on board with having a consistent framework around how best to do the procedures, when to use them, when not to, and so forth? I think the biggest challenge we face with that is, is that what exactly are we talking about? I think that we are not even sure of what this is that we're dealing with. And so we, we really need to uh, better define what is CCSVI. Then after you define what it is, you're better able to diagnose it. And I'm giving an example, if, if you have a, uh, a Doppler, let's say, as your test to, to diagnose it, and there are, as has been created, five criteria. There basically, or they were basically created for patients largely with MS. Perhaps CCSVI is not MS and is something completely different that is more vascular in nature. Those criteria may not be the most useful way of diagnosing it. So we really need to define what it is we're talking about first, and then we are better able to develop the criteria of diagnosis and then hopefully treatment. So what's the most critical takeaway? I think the takeaway message is, is that there is something going on here that improves patients' life the best we can tell from the available data, and that it's worth further study. Is there anything that I haven't asked you that I should, Doctor? Any no. point you'd like to convey? Okay. Thank you very much. Okay.